It's fermented, but is it good for you? A couple weeks ago, we talked about those loopholes people look for when they start on the plant paradox plan. And I get it, it's hard to start making healthy changes. So it's natural that people look for little cheats and workarounds so that they can still enjoy the foods they love. Which is probably why I get so many messages from people asking about foods like kombucha, miso, yogurt, and especially sourdough bread. Why? Because all these foods and more are made using the age-old process of fermentation. So today, I want to shed light on the truth about fermentation including which fermented foods are A-OK -okay on the plant par paradox plan and which you should probably avoid. Yes, even though fermentation kills lectins. And that's where we'll start, with the relationship between lectins and fermentation. Maybe you've heard me say it before, fermentation kills lectins. It's true. The fermentation process where sugars are converted to acids, gases, or alcohol deactivates lectins, making them safe to consume. And the fermentation process also creates plenty of gut-healthy probiotic bacteria. So you'd think it'd be a win-win. So why is it that we can go nuts on some fermented foods like sauerkraut, kimchi, and true fermented pickles, which you likely won't find at the grocery store, but there are others that you still need to avoid? Well, let's talk a bit about the fermented problem foods, starting with one of the most popular, yogurt. Sure, it's fermented, and that's fantastic. But if you're buying yogurt here in the United States, chances are it's still pretty terrible for your gut for two reasons. First, most yogurt you see at the grocery store is loaded in sugar, whether it's from added fruit, little bits of candy, or it's just plain old sweetened. And as you know, sugar feeds those bad bugs in your gut. Not great. And second, even if you find a yogurt that's low in sugar and high in protein, chances are it's still made with A1 milk. That's most of the milk found in this country, after all. Instead, look for unsweetened goat, sheep, or coconut milk yogurt. You'll enjoy that tangy, fermented flavor without the added sugar and the dangerous casein A1. Okay, next up, everyone's favorite fermented drink, kombucha. Now, I've talked about kombucha here on this channel before because I get a lot of questions about it, and I understand it's everyone's favorite health drink. It's a little sweet, a little bubbly, a bit fruity, and if you're trying to kick soda, it seems like a really good alternative. In fact, tons of my patients drink kombucha on a regular basis, and I'm actually okay with it. But it's another one of those foods where you've got to read the label really carefully. Because some kombucha has almost as much sugar as soda. And yes, even if that sugar comes from fruit, it's still sugar and it's bad for you. Plus, if kombucha is really high in sugar, that means it was added after the fermentation process. Just to keep your taste buds and your bad gut buddies happy. So, if you're going to drink kombucha, read the labels and pick the lowest sugar bottle you can find. Now, I can't talk about fermented foods without talking about the one you ask the most about, sourdough bread. I think someone asked me about bread at least once a day, and I understand. Bread is delicious, and for a lot of people, including my wife Penny and I, it was one of the hardest things to give up at first. So it's often one of the first foods people look to replace. And if you've done the research, maybe you've seen that sourdough bread is fermented. Plus, with white flour being lower lectin than wheat flour, maybe it's okay to eat, right? Well, if you must eat wheat bread, white so sourdough bread is your best bet. But don't trick yourself into believing it's healthy. You see, even though part of the flour in true sourdough bread is fermented, that's what makes it rise, the fermented starter is mixed with lectin-loaded non-fermented flour, especially in commercially available loaves. So, unless you're making bread yourself and letting the whole dough ferment, which admittedly would make a really sour bread, you're still eating non-fermented wheat with every slice. Now, believe it or not, bread isn't the only controversial food out there. Which brings me to my last questionable fermented food, miso. 
What makes it questionable? Well, it's made of soy. And soy, in general, is double trouble. First, it's loaded in phytoestrogens. Those are estrogen-like compounds that trick your body into doing strange things, hormonally speaking. Second, it's a bean. And you know that beans are loaded in lectins. But when you check out my upcoming book, The Longevity Paradox, you'll notice that I include miso in quite a few of my recipes. Why? Well, miso is an essential part of the Okinawan diet. That's the diet of some of the longest living people on earth. And you can feel good about telling people to go ahead and add a little miso paste to their diets, especially if they want to live a long, healthy life. You see, the soybeans and miso are fermented for six months minimum, so that you can bet that the lectins are pretty darn dead by the end of that time. Just be aware, it is a high sodium food, so if you're concerned about your salt intake, use moderation. But don't skip out on miso entirely. It's actually pretty fantastic for your immune system, your gut, and your overall health. And if you're looking for fermented foods you can eat, remember, sauerkraut and kimchi are amazing for your health. And so are goat's milk and coconut milk yogurt. If you're comfortable in the kitchen, try fermenting your own pickles. Just please peel and deseed the cucumbers first. And don't forget, just because it says fermented on the label doesn't mean it's magically good for you. If you're not sure, it's best to skip it or leave a comment and ask me directly. Because I'm Dr. Gundry and I'm always looking out for you.